Tesla's gonna straight up moon. Big production and more. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Howdy, gang. Howdy, gang. How is everybody? So glad you're here. So glad you're here. Oh, what a week, man. I don't know if any of you guys saw my amazing prediction of uh, early production numbers. It was bad. It was bad. I was so excited because I was shooting over a lot of the estimates uh, that I had seen. Uh, but that's because I do my math my own way. And, uh, and I was wrong in the right way. Uh, the numbers are huge gigantic. Oh boy, I need to mute that guy. Okay, let me make sure my volume's down. Okay, okay. So in a minute here, let's just get started. Let's just do this. By the way, not investment advice. Uh, I can't predict the market. I am not a time traveler. Uh, I wish I was. It'd be uh, it'd be a great way to go back in time and uh, boy. Too many jokes there. Too many jokes there, and I don't want to get demonetized. So, boom goes the production. Yeah, made in China, exports skyrocket, production skyrockets. What huge numbers. 275% year-over-year increase. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? So, we're going to be talking in a second here. Look at those pretty, pretty numbers. We're going to be talking in a second here about what is the biggest obstacle to Tesla's continued growth. What is the bottleneck? Leave it in the comments. I want to, I want to see it in the chat because we're going to get to it. But I want to hear what you think the bottleneck is to Tesla absolutely exploding next year because I got answers, baby. So Tesla files to expand Model Y production lines at Fremont Factory. Fremont is the backbone. Well, it's the heart and soul. It's uh, maybe it's just the soul, but it does big numbers. And this uh, new tent is uh, going to do bigger numbers. It's pretty exciting. And you think, why do they need General Assembly 4.5? Don't they have other factories coming online like any second? Yeah, and it's not enough. I just saw today Sawyer tweeted that. Uh, Model Y is sold out, I think, through the rest of the year. I think that's what I saw. It is pretty exciting. But what's the bottleneck? Let me see if anyone uh, has answered yet. No answers yet. I've got a la I've got a delay on this uh, to prevent falling offline accidentally. Current bottleneck equals batteries. Yeah, batteries. Where are the batteries going to come from, man? They don't come from thin air. And Ford increasing by 10%, that's great. That's like six batteries, right? That's not a lot of batteries. But for Tesla to grow by 10%, we're talking 80,000 cars worth. Who is this? Thank you so much. Uh, so... We've got factories coming online that are going to make things big. Um, and by the way, I am not going to the Berlin factory. Um, my wife vetoed that uh, because what she pointed out was that even if I book the ticket, there's no guarantee that travel will still be unrestricted in October. And yeah, so we've got Berlin coming online. We've got Shanghai going gangbusters. We've got Fremont expanding. We've got Berlin coming online. And of course, we got Texas. This, These are pictures of Texas. I'm sure you guys have all seen them. Um, Greg says this, the constraint is parts. I mean, that's true. That is correct. They are on the cusp of production. But the constraint is batteries. Where are you going to get another 11 kajillion batteries? I do have an answer on, on that answer. Chips. I got that sorted. What Tesla's bet on iron-based batteries means for manufacturers. So um, there's a great video, uh, which I'll show in a second here. The LFP batteries are good. 
They don't have the same energy density, but you can charge them to 100% instead of 80%. So you get the entire use of your battery instead of most of it without damaging it. Now in a pinch, you can obviously drive a lithium ion Tesla further, but on a normal day, you can jar, uh, just charge it all the way up with an LFP and it works and the patent's expiring. And this is a battery that's been manufactured in China for ages. I don't know how many of you guys, Oh no, how long ago was there no sound? Oh, at least it wasn't three episodes like Snoop Dogg. Let's go back. Let's go back. I apologize for that. Well, I'll cut that out of the replay, that's for sure. All uh, right. <clears throat> how long ago was it? How long ago was it? Okay, anyway. Uh... Semiconductor shortage hammering automakers, costing billions in lost production and sales. Better? You're saying it's still silent. Well, can you hear me now? Let me know if the sound is back. Waiting to hear if there's sound. Okay, let me turn it up on my end. Oh no, I've got it muted. There we go. Okay. My apologies, my friends. Uh, thank you, Todd, for the very visible uh, notification. Oh boy. <sighs> Semiconductor shortage hammering automakers, costing billions in lost production and sales. Yeah. Um, this is affecting everyone. Um, but you're going to sell your, you're going to sell your chips. Um, and you're going to sell them at whatever price you can. The only question is to whom will you sell them? So my question is, you're the company that has the chips. Who would you like to sell them to? The shrinking company or the growing company? And for that matter, wouldn't you rather sell them to Tesla knowing that you'll buy their loyalty when Tesla is capable of using other chips, of repurposing chips that were not originally meant for it. Uh, they were using 19 different controller chips. They just had their in-house software team uh, port it over to run on those chips. 
So I think Tesla is going to have a, a better position to get chips than the competition. Make sure we're doing good. Yeah. Major automakers fear the global chip shortage could persist for some time, and it may. Year, two, maybe a little longer, um, but I don't know. I don't know, and I think with the fat margins Tesla has, they can outbid on those chips. Um, Tesla has among the fattest margins in the industry, and considering everyone is supply constrained right now, not just EV makers, but ice makers too, Ooh, yeah, I gotta fix my ice maker. Um, that they're going to be able to, um, everybody's gonna be able to sell their cars. That's not gonna be a problem. And Tesla's been selling them with higher margins, so that's good too, leaving them more room to actually pay for the chips. Now, this is more fun. Remember, we're still on the competition is fumbling. Tesla's attempt to crack Indian market puts focus on tariffs. Tesla's a prestige brand. Wow, that's a beautiful shot. Tesla's a prestige brand. They can, um, everybody wants them there. Uh, so Tesla is looking at making some moves into India. And at the same time, Ford, to stop making cars in India with a $2 billion loss. Mmm, mmm. They only got up to 2% market share. Yeah, that's tough. Now, I think uh, Tesla could make immediate moves if they were able to import Model 3s and Ys uh, with little or no tariff. They could sell quite a few. Um, if they want to do manufacturing there, they could set up, they could put a plant on the west coast of India that makes only right-hand drive and use that to export to New Zealand, Australia, the UK, and Thailand, and anywhere that has right-hand drive. There, no switching over tooling in Shanghai to make those export models. So even uh, forgetting about the domestic market, they could focus on exports, it would still be good. And that Model 2 is coming. And if all they have to do is make a factory or take steps towards making a factory to import tariff-free today, that gives access to a new market. Free money equals best money. I don't know how you guys feel about free money, but I'm a fan. And Tesla is in a unique position to get some. Tesla becomes China's most subsidized EV maker by receiving $325 million in 2020. Now, this money didn't go to Tesla. It went to car buyers. It went to purchasers of the vehicles. And yeah, 68% of its, so close to nice, of its China sales qualified for these subsidies. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. Um, and it makes their cars more affordable, certainly than imports. Uh, most imports, all imports. And way more affordable than ICE. German decision on Tesla subsidies expected by end of year. Giga Berlin held off on breaking ground on their battery factory because they knew this subsidy was coming. The European Union wants battery plants in Europe. They want to minimize their dependence on China in that regard. There's three and a half billion dollars up for grabs, 2.9 billion euros, of which, did I pass it? Of which, it's probably in the headline, of which Tesla could receive, sorry, that's so jerky, 1.14 billion, there it is, 1.14 billion euros. So of that huge pot of money available to everyone, mostly battery makers, mostly not car makers, a third of it, 5% discount on building that massive, massive capacity. That's, that's free money, man. 1.14 billion euros. That's more than Shanghai, than Giga Shanghai phase one cost to build. Fact sheet, Biden administration advances electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Now, I don't think the EV tax credit is going to survive. Uh, I don't think the EV tax credit is going to survive. Um, because 
There's a lot of dinosaurs in Congress who are beholden to the old guard uh, in terms of auto and in terms of fossil fuel. But the amount of money they're looking at to add 100,000 uh, public chargers is not a significant amount of money. We're talking a three and a half trillion dollar plan of which this would be, oh, I thought I had it highlighted, 15 billion dollars. 15 billion out of three and a half trillion, we're talking pennies. So this would give money to folks like EVgo and Electrify America to build out charging. But who's in the best position to expand the quickest? Who knows better than anyone where charges are needed? Uh, who's going to use them? And unlike EVgo and Electrify America, a Tesla supercharger will be available to every EV owner, unless you own a Leaf. Sorry. So they could, they could capitalize on it, but there are obstacles. For example, can you build enough superchargers? Can you deploy them fast enough? Tesla completes supercharger factory in Shanghai. It will make 10,000 units stalls per year. Now, I'm sure a lot of this is going to be going into China, but it could very easily be redirected, some of it at least, back to the U.S. Uh, Giga New York, where I believe they make them currently for the U.S. market, can also increase production as needed, but this one's ready. Numbers are valid for 22 hours of operation, 300 days a year. We got the superchargers. Well, the, but the, the problem is deploying them takes time. It's painful. You've got to, you know, ship them out, stand them up, wire them up, do all the... No, actually what you do, they come prefab now. This chunk of cement just gets lowered into place and wired up. That's it. If the ground is prepped and the wires are available, you just plug it in. It, uh, we saw these for the first time real recently. I want to say Giga Texas was the first place we saw them deployed. But it's a prefab unit. It just goes in. So of that $15 billion that's available to everyone, Tesla's in a unique position to get a big chunk of that money for something they were planning on doing anyway. Same with the uh, battery factory subsidies, same with the EV subsidies in China. Tesla's just doing what they were already going to do, and they or their customers are getting a pretty significant discount. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and Tesla is the only EV company that has their own charging network. So Ford's not going to get any money out of this. GM is not going to get any money out of this. VW, I believe, sold or tried to sell off Electrify America. They're not going to get any money out of this. Now, they will get benefits from it, but not direct benefits. So that's exciting. You can see why I'm excited, right? Still have sound? Still have sound. Tesla's advantages. Now, this is kind of a catch-all for the rest of the good news for the week, but it's still all good news. Did you know... Tesla has introduced Acceleration Boost for the Model Y for about $2,000. So instead of 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, it'll do it in 4.4. So for reference, that's fast. Um, the 1999 Dodge Viper was amazing. It was one of the fastest American-built factory cars ever. 4.9 seconds. 4.9? Yeah. Um... And New Mexico <laughs> doesn't have any sales or service centers. Well, they do now, because even though the dealer network is deeply entrenched there, Tesla managed to build it on tribal land. So they, instead of building it in the state, in the United State of New Mexico, they built it in the sovereign nation of Pueblo. So that's smart. And I think we might start seeing that happening in other places. Because if this workaround works, it's not like the land is more expensive. It's not like there's other obstacles. This could work. Uh, 
a lesser one here, electric car charging points will be required by building codes in England starting next year. If they're switching to 100% EVs by 2030, new houses need to have them now. That's kind of nice. Not a unique advantage for Tesla, uh, except that somebody would be perhaps more inclined to replace their, their aging car with a new Tesla rather than a used something else that burns gas. Now, chips. We were talking about chips. There was a question I've answered a couple times. Start talking about Okay. Uh, there was a... Right. Um, we were talking about chips and the chip shortage, and I've been asked many, many times, um, is Tesla going to build their own chip fab? And I keep saying no. And here's one reason why. Samsung is planning on building a $17 billion chip factory in Texas. And I was thinking, boy, that seems awfully expensive. And it is. And it turns out the reason for it is because it's a, it's a big boy. 51.7 million square feet. Maybe that's just the land. Maybe that's just the land. Yeah, it's got to be, right? Um, but that means there'll be more chips in the U.S. And just more chips generally. It's a huge facility. Um, I pulled up the list of huge places, but I realize now I think that's the land area. That's the land area. And of course, big news today. Uh, a, a bone stock Plaid Model S has beat the Porsche Taycan's speed. Uh, it's time at the Nürburgring in Germany. It's a very challenging course, and as you can see, it has been done with the yoke. Uh, so that's great. And now the next plan is they, they want to go back and do it again, but with um, aero trim to make it more aerodynamic, with uh, different tires, with non-stock tires, and with um, ceramic brakes, and there might have been a suspension tune mention. But that'll knock a little bit more time off. It only beat Porsche by... I want to say four, seven seconds or 12 seconds, but it's fast. It's a fast car. And of course, the critics are saying, well, it's got other problems. It's, um, you know, these are the people who are saying, uh, well, uh, Tesla can't even run the course. It'll, it'll overheat and, and time out, go into limp mode. But now, of course, the critics are saying, well, it's still not that fast, and Porsche can probably go fast. Guys, it's a commuter car. This is a comfortable commuter car that is outrageously fun to drive, and its lap time is beating a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the big dogs um, of, of cars that cost vastly, vastly more money. So, I'm going to look at some questions here. Okay. Yeah, the most paying company sounds great, sounds good. Um, yes, Ford did quit India. Oh, the Apple car. I don't know, man. I'm excited about it. Uh, they have the cash to burn, and they have the engineering talent. I believe they would face the exact same obstacles Tesla faced in the early years, which is that despite having brilliant people, they didn't have auto people. But the legacy auto guys may start dropping like flies. And boy, I think a Apple car would sell well on styling and brand name alone. Although Dyson did drop a half a billion into his pretty attractive little EV before he realized there's just no way to make it and sell it at a profit. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, the Pueblo workaround was really smooth. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. If that's floor area, Daniel, if, 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 if we're talking 51 million square feet of floor area, that would make it bigger than the top three buildings in the world combined. Thank you, Jim. My goodness. That was very generous. I appreciate that. That was really cool. So if it is that big and it's Samsung, man, they know, I trust that they know what the, um, 
what the what the horizon has in terms of demand and supply for chips and chip demand is not going away Ooh, I oh, I didn't get the LFP patent part in I will go back for that I will go back for that that is that is too important you can keep asking questions and I will come back to them uh, LFP patent would be So, the LFP patent is expiring. It's a good battery with a known chemistry that's been used for ages in China. And with the licensing, uh, with the patent expiring, like in the next matter of months, um, these are going to be used in American cars. These are batteries that are um, less conflict mineral intensive and... Um, and easier to get. And unlike the lithium ion, which is, uh, which you really shouldn't go below 20 or above 80% in terms of your charge. This, you can go zero to a hundred charge. So the effective range you get without damaging your battery is, is awfully comparable. And these are by many estimates, million mile batteries. And then I said, watch Jordan Gisagi limiting factor. Um, he's got this absolutely fantastic video about it that explains um, why it's coming in and why it's going to work. And it's, and it's good stuff. So that should cover everything that I, that I pantomimed earlier. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Are you worried if Rivian doesn't deliver cars this month or end of year? I'm not worried about Rivian at all. Um, they're going to start selling cars and they're going to sell everyone they can make for a while. Um, I believe they're dreadfully overweight and dreadfully overpriced, but they're cute. And boy, the weight is really an issue though. Uh, watching Warren Redlick recently, he noted that in a car and driver consumer report, something like that, as tested, it was 7,000 pounds. It's only rated to, to, for a gross vehicle weight of 8,500. So if you put some dudes in it, of which it seats, what, five? You got very little room left for cargo weight. And that's kind of a problem. Okay, Joe says floor area is 6 million square feet for the Samsung chip plant. That seems more reasonable. But it's $17 billion, and Samsung knows what they're doing. I don't believe Tesla would go into that business because it is so expensive and so difficult and it would be, and it's not their area of core competency. So yeah, I agree. That is kind of weird that they would measure. Yeah. The land I've always heard in acres or okay. Superchargers around here have 50% of spaces without chargers. So there's room to rapidly expand. I agree. I agree. I've seen, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of chargers around in different places. And uh, parking is easy. Finding parking is easy. The outer edge of any mall parking lot is easy. And next to an Applebee's, statistically speaking. Do I think... Tesla hits the $40,000 price point on the single motor Cybertruck. I have a very good answer for this. I mentioned it in a comment, I think, yesterday. Yes, they will, but it'll probably be off menu and it'll probably only be shipped to about 10 or 20 people, just like the $35,000 Model 3. Because why would they? And considering how long it's been from unveiling until now, inflation alone tax on another grand. So I think the $39,000, $40,000 Cybertruck will exist briefly and with great difficulty. Uh-huh. Will Tesla use FSD to automatically deliver cars? At some point, they're going to have to. For one thing, they've got to be working on the ability to load car carriers autonomously because that would... Be, that would be ballet. That would be a thing of beauty. 
Single motor Cybertruck is so far away. Maybe. Uh, the, small, the fact that it has a smaller battery means they may prioritize those um, if batteries are the constraint. They originally planned to start with the single motor. And that was only later when the reservations started coming in and a disproportionate number were for the higher trims that they switched it. Uh-huh. Tesla Economist is another underrated channel. I enjoy that one. I enjoy that one. I'm thinking of upgrading my dual motor to tri-motor if I'll get it sooner. And yeah, that's the sort of thing that your uh, local service advisor would get in touch with you about when delivery gets near. There were a lot of people who were waiting for Model 3s who got calls saying, hey, we've got some, I don't know, P75s that we're trying to get rid of. Do you want that instead? I don't remember now, but that was a thing that happened. But I'm just very excited about how all of this stuff is coming together. It's just, next year is going to be insane. We're going to have four and a half lines making Model Ys in, well, we're going to have many lines making Model Ys in Fremont. We're going to have a ton of Model Ys coming out of Shanghai, which already is rumored to be at a capacity of a thousand a day. And then Berlin and Texas are coming on, also making Ys. Well, how many Model Ys can you sell? Well, it doesn't matter. Drop the price five grand and you'll sell them all. Or don't and, you know, see how many you can sell. Uh, I Have I seen the Wuwa video of them loading the transport ships in China? Looks so tedious and time-consuming. Got to be a better way. I have seen them. Uh, and there has got to be a better way. I then, of course, was recommended a video of what those look like from the inside when they're being loaded. And that was pretty interesting, too. But, yeah, there's got to be a better way, and there is. Uh, apparently, at one point, Nissan was doing some limited trials of not going all the way onto the ship, but just out to the dock or something like that. But Nissan has kind of abandoned their, their autonomy aspirations because it's very difficult. It's very difficult. All right. Well, 8.32. Well... I assume I've got stuff to do. Haven't had dinner yet. I got to get on that. So I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. My friends, if you have more questions, please post them in the comments. Oh, that's right. And, uh, you know, uh, big old thanks to my Patreons as always. Ooh, that's lovely. Boy, you think I'd have that sorted out by now. There we go. Oh, good, good, good. Classy. There we go. There we go. Thank you to my Patreons who keep the channel running, get an ad-free experience, all that great stuff. And to the Patreons, um, this will be up ad-free sooner than before because I realized I have a setting that allows me to record it and stream it at the same time. Uh, and apparently also mute it. I don't know what I did there. I apologize for that. Get that sorted out next week. And yeah, thank you guys, all of you, so much. Make sure I didn't have anything. Texas has three Indian reservations, way south on the coast, way west on the east, and by Houston. By Houston, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Giga Texas already making insane numbers of Model Y castings. When will they use it? More for Model 3? Who knows? Is Nissan still a brand? Barely, barely. I think they might be one of the first.